Good afternoon. We will resume the session after a short coffee break. I'd like to repeat in brief that in the following session, this conference is divided into three parts. Uh, here, uh, the topic is the marketplace of good practice in small hall round table on responsible public procurement in health sector. And in a long tree, we will have the round table of European competency centers. So um, if you are sitting in a wrong hall, please uh, be so kind and uh, choose the hall uh, of your wish. Um, so here we will hear about inspirational public tenders uh, from public contracting authorities. I'd like to open the session, the marketplace of uh, good practice examples, and I would like to ask the representatives of Charles University, Mr. Twain, and uh, speaker from Technical University Brno, Mrs. Veronika Piačkova. We will hear very inspirational, successful public uh, contracts as uh, examples of good practice that I believe will be a great uh, inspiration and possibly also a template for other contracts. I'd like to ask Mr. Radek Haubert, who will deliver a presentation about uh, exceptional public uh, contract. It is a really a very special contract called the construction of a seat with design built and BIM method, which is a great example of responsible and sustainable public procurement where environmental, social and innovative aspects were used to the complex evaluation of the um, uh, characteristics of the building. The floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. I'd like to present you the construction of our seat, our headquarters. So the general project was there, has been there since 1993. Actually, our predecessors wanted to the, do this already in the 1930s, but when the building was completed, it was uh, stolen first by Hitler and and then by the Ministry of the Environment, uh, sorry, the interior, but uh, let's continue. In 1993, our seat was in Jankovcova, uh, Prague 7. The building was uh, not uh, um, appropriate for us. It was too small, so then we actually moved to other buildings. We were their tenants. Then we started to prepare for the tender. I've chosen a land plot not far from Jankovcova, also in Prague 7, Holešovice. Even though uh, the um, preliminary studies were prepared, the project uh, was suspended, um, and uh, there was a period uh, uh, when uh, the management decided that we should actually um, rent uh, the premises. So the result was that uh, until 2010, in 14, we rented the premises, but the cost of rent was so high that uh, throughout that period, we were trying to find more efficient uh, uh, solution. We actually collaborated uh, with uh, another uh, um, 
national body that uh, actually showed us all available state-owned premises, but we realized that none of these premises was uh, um, sufficient for us in terms of capacities and other requirements. So we uh, continued looking for um, premises. So we asked for expert opinion from the Czech uh, University, Czech Technical University. The result uh, was that we should build our own building. Um, so we modified uh, uh, the design documentation. We also asked for uh, the funds. Uh, it uh, needed to be approved by the parliament. Uh, then it had to be approved also by the government because we wanted to use the money saved from the previous periods, but uh, they needed to be transferred for uh, just uh, regular funds to capital funds. So this can be approved only by the government. So it took another year. Then we actually spent some time on designing, but the result was the following. You can see the visualization, the uh, uh, original plan is the use of brownfield, uh, uh, the former brewery, G and H, H parts are our premises. And here you can see the details, including all the data, the number of square meters, and uh, so on. Uh, uh, what was interesting from the very uh, beginning was the energy solutions. There were three possibilities. Now you, uh, you will laugh, but at that time we were considering uh, connection to central heating, which is not the best solution today, or gas boiler house, uh, which is even worse today in terms of energy efficiency, or the solution, which is uh, not quite usual, and these are energy uh, drills, wells. Uh, so that's what we uh, went for, and I think it was a good solution in terms of strategy. I will get back to that, because I think it's very important. Another visualization um, that uh, shows all uh, the purposes of the building think uh, there will it will be also the seat of the archives and parliament uh, re, uh, library so they have 2500 square meters for archive and library which we suppose it could be enough uh, for, for at least 100 years Complexity is something that's really interesting about the project we didn't want it to uh, be interesting in terms of engineering because we use the innovative method of BIM. We didn't want it to be um, uh, as green as possible, but uh, we tried to find a compromise. Um, we just wanted to have a balanced uh, um, view of uh, economic, uh, ecological, and social aspects, and uh, we have uh, uh, chosen uh, the three, uh, four uh, tools, uh, and uh, uh, in this manner, we wanted to ensure a balanced approach. I will start with FIDIC. It is uh, international contractual standard. We have uh, uh, opted for yellow book uh, uh, FEDEC because we wanted to use the possibility of uh, delegate the responsibility for design documentation to contractor and also to get the possibility to uh, uh, influence the project during the construction, which uh, turned out to be uh, very important. Um, uh, and also the price of 
the work is uh, set uh, as uh, a flat price. We were also looking for the lowest um, uh, life cycle building cost, uh, and we needed analysis for that, which uh, we approached uh, Czech Technical University. Uh, Professor Heralova, who helped us with that, they have a special tool for that, which is called the National Calculation Tool that helps them to choose the most important parameters from the project, uh, I mean the most important in terms of life cycle, and to assess them throughout the uh, next period. In our case, it was 30 years, because longer period doesn't is not um, uh, meaningful, because there, or there would be too many changes in technologies if the period was longer. So uh, to assess the quality of the building, including the green and social aspects, um, there are several certification systems we have chosen as a B tool. Uh, it is the originally a Swiss tool, but adapted to Czech conditions. And in our opinion, it uh, corresponds better or, or is more appropriate for our situation than American tools. Here you can see what it consists of. There are environmental criteria, social criteria, and also economic criteria and management. Here you can see, uh, again, visualization, the original BIM model. Today, both buildings uh, are uh, already here, and uh, we will soon have occupancy permit procedure. I don't know whether you can see it well, but this slide is quite interesting, because from the very beginning, we wanted to know uh, in what respects this building will be different from other contracts. And we identify a huge amount of uncertainty. Uncertainty is something that is common to all construction sites uh, for all uh, the parties, for investor and contractor and so on. It starts with uh, the, the under ground services, the risk, risks uh, is of the investor. And we ask, why should we assume the risk for underground services? It is the former brewery, and we don't know what we can find underground. So we were looking for uh, appropriate tools. So the first uh, that comes to our uh, mind is uh, the drill. And uh, because uh, it was not detailed enough, we also conducted another geophysical survey. This is the result uh, of the survey or the graphic uh, outcome. And you can see that in several places they uh, found uh, various uh, depositions of ashes uh, or underground channels. So, um, yeah, you know, there was a bottling plant for the brewery. So, um, and thanks to that, we were able to include in the tender documentation that uh, from the moment when the contractor started to dig the foundations, we actually um, uh, the error rate in our um, estimates and assumptions was only 1% against the reality. So this is something we really need to try to do that with uh, every construction uh, tender, because otherwise we assume really huge uh, risks. Here you can see the design documents. Uh, uh, we can skip that. Now, supplier system. 
As I have already mentioned, we have used the, the yellow FIDIC book where we are as uh, the contracting authority. We also had some advisors and consultants. They are around that. Then the uh, main uh, designer uh, that should also conduct the author supervision. We also have the coordinator for occupational health and safety um, because we wanted to ensure uh, the safety in the construction. I think it was a good uh, step to have an independent uh, coordinator for occupational health and safety, and they really um, uh, care about safety, and we didn't have any injuries. Then there is a contractor and also the administrator uh, of uh, the construction or manager of the construction. It is a person um, who uh, monitors the technical quality and is also or takes a role of a moderator between us and the contractor. And then there are some direct uh, suppliers, uh, IT technologies, uh, interior uh, equipment, and so on. Here we can see some characteristics. As I have already said, we try to use the life cycle, uh, also the design documents from our general designer or our main construction. And uh, we also used a uh, cap on investment uh, expenditure. Thanks to that, we are not in problems like other constructions where the cost of uh, additional uh, funding uh, are high. Here you can see the result of BIM. Uh, it is a model for the building where you can fine-tune the um, features in order to prevent collisions uh, or um, reworking of various things in the construction site. It's actually not one model, but uh, a lot of models uh, uh, broken down uh, by uh, uh, crafts uh, and then uh, combined together into one system. Here you can see it uh, with Without um, the envelope, these uh, are only technologies. What takes us uh, back to a socially responsible public procurement is this, at first sight, very simple graph. And it is a model of using energy from the drilling field and or energy well. Um, uh, the big problem is actually the cooling of uh, the modern building, not heating. So from this uh, well, uh, area, we are trying to actually get the energy. The uh, wells are about 150 meters uh, high, and we uh, take uh, 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 coolness uh, from uh, this uh, well during the summer period. Uh, and in winter period, uh, we actually take uh, heat uh, from this well. So this uh, year cycle uh, consists of these two types, uh, and it should be quite a balanced uh, usage. And it helps us to get into such a situation when we um, uh, get the energy only for the cost of uh, welling or pumping work. So um, we will see how much it will be exactly, but the savings of energy is really huge. Only this uh, yearly cycle is uh, uh, more than one 0.1 giga. So here is an electronic construction journal. 
In order to be successful, we cooperated uh, with uh, other organizations. This is uh, about the cooperation with uh, CHAS, uh, that is in charge of BIM. Uh, we also use some unique technologies. Uh, this is a robot uh, from a healthy um, company that drilled uh, openings for suspension of technologies uh, or equipment from the ceiling. You can't see the whole thing, but uh, they also sent an operator of the robot. Uh, the task of the operator was to um, move uh, the robot with joystick uh, by two meters. Uh, and the robot would be able to manage it uh, on its own, but uh, the regulations do not enable that. So the advantage of this solution is not only that uh, it is a drill by a robot uh, and not by a person, but precision is really important because it is, the robot is able to collect the data from BIM and is able to drill much faster than any human being. Uh, this is a mind map that uh, we used to uh, make sure what we still uh, need to do. This is an older version. We still work on the project. We are at a stage when we identified further areas that are suitable for social enterprises because uh, um, the period of uh, moving uh, to the new building uh, is upcoming, so we need to shred quite uh, uh, and discard quite a lot of materials and documents. So this could be an, a task for a social enterprise. I think that uh, public greenery, um, there will be quite a lot of public greenery. We have there a public park. We have also the premises for our, uh, children's uh, um, play field. So we also believe that public greenery would also be suitable for uh, and its maintenance also for a social enterprise. And uh, we would also like to use environmental friendly materials uh, for that playground and park. Um, so this is all regarding other areas that are still ahead of us. And as uh, has been mentioned, we uh, ranked uh, second in the Procura Award. The first one uh, was Santiago de Compostela, so it's difficult to be better than the miracle uh, city. No, I'm just uh, kidding. So I I would like to express my thanks uh, for the representatives of the Ministry of Labor, especially Mr. Gromnica. What has been awarded is uh, the combination of all the used tools, because uh, uh, every single tool is being used independently, but uh, using them in combination on one particular building construction site, it's uh, quite unique, the recycling of uh, the concrete uh, from the foundations uh, uh, that was uh, highly valued as well. It was shredded uh, and used uh, as a foundation for uh, the road, uh, road uh, uh, the sand which was mined did not go to did not go to uh, any uh, west pit, but it was used for the building as we are very close to the uh, river the quality of the sand uh, was uh, very good and of course uh, the skeleton is uh, cast uh, iron uh, everything was transported by the river so a couple of tons of CO2 were uh, saved and we have uh, also received uh, we have also received 
received an award for the best uh, act in uh, initiative, uh, for the best initiative in public procurement. Uh, now we have to approve uh, the building for the dwelling. Uh, we are to take it over and we are yet to install the photovoltaic uh, at the roof. Uh, nevertheless, now we need additional approval or for construction for building the building permit for the photovoltaic and then of we can launch other activities. What, are, what I think about the project, project of the complexity, balanced, innovative approach, uh, the uh, effort to cross, cross the borders or limits, uh, balancing all the principles, uh, not only the responsible procurement, but 3E principle, because uh, our uh, office is about efficiencies, so all the steps uh, undertaken should also be efficient. Další věc, jak jsem říkal, je to o otevřeném systému, the o tom, že ten projekt není, nikdy hotový, on nebude hotový ani ve chvíli, no kdy ho převezmeme, protože nebudeme dál pracovat, budeme se dál přednout ty data z vědomu, až se tohle se zpětně Uh, building construction experts, energy experts. Uh, then we had the teams of uh, designers, project designers, uh, administrator of uh, the construction site, the supplier. Sometimes it's difficult to manage all the teams so they can cooperate, but you know, I think it was a perfect approach. I wouldn't do it in other way. Uh, you know, the, the diversity and variety of the teams, it's really great. The result of all these uh, aspects uh, is that uh, there was only a minor increase in the overall price, it's less than 2%, and that is even though we have implemented more than we originally wanted in the project, the last uh, improvement had to be from uh, the fire brigade in Prague. They want to have uh, the individual slots in the underground garage. They want to have uh, anti-firing uh, partition walls. So even though we had some additional costs, we are still below the 2% of the price increase, which I would still consider quite unique. Uh, chtěl jsem se tam s vámi rozloučit. Tam uh, jenom uh, the, the very last slide was just uh, to say goodbye. There was a link to the uh, camera, which is uh, run, uh, available 24 hours uh, a day, and you can uh, see the process of the building from the very, very beginning till today. Thank you very much for the presentation of this unique example of a responsible public procurement. Now I would like to give the floor to the public procurement of cleaning services for Charles University, which will be presented by Mr. Zdeněk Cvain, the head of the procurement department of Charles University. Thank you very much for the presentation. Tak, co bylo vlastně důvodem, so proč jsme what, se za, uh, zabývali uh, zhruba před uh, rokem, respektive uh, 
bit roughly a year or rather more than a year for cleaning services for the building of Karolinu, which is quite vast building, a combination of the historical buildings, the, the, the management of the university, there is also some, some fac uh, faculties of the university they have their own uh, space, uh, it's a complex of the buildings. The major reason was that we were not satisfied with the cleaning services which we uh, tried to purchase. Uh, usually the cooperation with the supply lasted uh, just uh, one year before uh, having to look for a new one. So we were looking for a possibility how to integrate into such a procurement also the, the appropriate quality so the granted services be on a higher level than uh, was the case. So we of course uh, did not expect uh, top quality but uh, Anyway, we wanted to, to increase uh, significantly the quality of cleaning services than uh, provided before. So the main goal was to acquire high quality of services. A that was jsme to chtěli, have aby the building clean. Uh, At the same time, we wanted to protože, have uh, good working conditions for all the people silami, of the cleaning uh, services. Usually, these uh, services are rendered by uh, poorly educated uh, people the, and uh, the companies uh, which chtěli, are employing uh, those People, they are really exploiting them. So that's what we wanted to avoid. We wanted to fair working conditions uh, and at the same time we wanted to have to, uh, cleaning services using the environmental environmentally friendly uh, Cleaning means definitely working conditions and using the environmentally friendly uh, procedures for cleaning. These were fixed terms, criteria. Then we also were interested in having high good quality working conditions of the uh, cleaning service uh, employees and uh, the possibility to offer better uh, rewards to these, to these people. At the same time, we were considering the possibility of using such services and procedures which would increase the quality and environmental friendliness. And we wanted to look for such uh, criteria, which we didn't want to have them as fixed criteria. Takže jaké jsme stanovili pevné so zadávací podmínky? Stanovili jsme, že dodatel je povinen při plnění předmětu plnění veřejné zakázky zajistit legální zaměstnávání, důstojný pracovní pozitiv a odpovídající životní Nejprve on dodavatel čestné prohlášení, že je připraven si to podmínky sign a declaration that they are ready to comply with these con, uh, conditions and then uh, every three months they are to uh, prove that they are complying with these uh, conditions. They will have to prove that uh, uh, whoever is participating uh, on uh, the uh, rendering of the service are legally employed at the same time 
definicí ekologického úklidu, která byla vypracována Czech Association of Cleaning. A zároveň jsme požadovali připlnění předvětlečené zakázky používat pouze šetrné a zdravotně nezávodné pochy úklidové environmental friendly cleaning supplies. So how we first the but we wanted to have four groups. We had the price, the guaranteed wage of cleaning person, 40%, then satisfaction of the Satisfaction offered by with the members of the implementation team. Nabídková cena, která tady tvořila 30%, the price which amounted to 30% of the total evaluation, based that our assumed value was four or five million check crowns, was at the same time defined as the maximum price for. Zároveň jsme v zadávacích podmínkách stanovili, že nabídkovou cenu pod 3,5 miliónu korun za dvanáctí budeme považovat za mimočádní smlouvu. Při stanovení této hranice jsme vycházeli z toho, že všichni členové týmu pracovníci budou dostávat alespoň minimální zaručenou mzdu jsou zaměstnání na pracovní poměr, nikoli tedy na práce mimo pracovní poměr, respektive na dohody o pracovní poměr, mají plný úvazek, mají standardní pracovní dobu a zároveň se vycházeli z předpokladu, že standardní pracovní úklidu není osobně se zdravotním postižením. Prakticky se vlastně podařilo dosáhnout toho záměru, As a matter of fact, we managed to respect the minimum hranice three and a half million euros. Nebyly podány žádné nabídky, takže jsme nemuseli řešit dotazy na mimočádní nabídkovou cenu. Zároveň žádná nabídka nepřekvapila tu nejvyšší cenu. And at the same time, no better exceeded the maximum price. The second criteria was guaranteed gross wage of a cleaning person. We wanted to be in full compliance with the labour code. The cleaning workers are in the second category. The minimum wage amounts to roughly 100 Czech crowns, which is a gross wage per one hour. So we wanted to have at least a minimum wage of 100 Czech crowns at the same time. Kterou dodavatel nabídl, že bude platit zaměstnancům. Hodnotili jsme rozpětí od té části 100 korun, která byla minimální, zvůj částky 150 euro. Do toho pěkně nám to vyšlo, protože za každých 50 navíc na těchto korun bylo možné získat jeden bod a při těch, kteří maximálně hodnocili 150 korunách, So in case of 150 crowns as the maximum, so they were offering more than that, more than 150. So they got total 100 points. 
In the criteria, we have, of course, defined what, what is understood by a cleaning worker, what is understood by a minimum hourly uh, gross wage, and that it has to be guaranteed to all working, to all people working in the team of uh, the cleaners. Uh, the, the, in, in debates, we have uh, received quite a wide span of the, the wages, 100 to 180 crowns, the value 180 crowns uh, submitted in one of the bits uh, caught our attention. And uh, we may assume that it's an employer who really, he really values highly uh, the employees. Nevertheless, uh, the winner uh, offered 150 crowns per as the minimum guaranteed wage, uh, so use the maximum uh, number of points for this particular criteria. When we were verifying the approach of uh, this uh, bidder, we have uh, found out that he, they really do pay 150 crowns, it was not only to get the particular, to win the particular tender. As for the guaranteed minimum wage in this context, I would like also to draw your attention to uh, the announcement of the anti-monopoly office, where they were evaluating uh, the rewarding of the drivers in public transport that uh, what can be that uh, this minimum wage can be considered as a social criteria. At the same time, using this criteria for big evaluation, we were considering or we, we were of the opinion that we will probably get a better quality of services because better paid work in a similar field of activity is usually more and more motivated to deliver better quality of service. Another criterion <coughs> we used uh, is called the satisfaction of the client with the members of the implementation team. I already said that this criteria's name is not really good. It's about the assessment of the experience uh, of uh, the members of the implementation team. The members of the implementation team had to be those that were offered as part of the technical qualification. Uh, and this experience um, had to be confirmed by uh, the client. Uh, uh, the one who ordered the services and the quality of the services provided by the members of this team was scored with points at a specific scale. We, as part of tender specifications, provided a, a, a form um, pre-filled uh, so that uh, those who ordered the services uh, uh, could uh, actually complete it and express uh, their satisfaction and also confirmed that the services had uh, really been provided by those team members and they were supposed to evaluate their satisfaction with the services. Um, they evaluated the soft skills of the key members of the team, the manager of the contract, and also the head of the uh, service. This evaluation applied to three people, team manager, and other two uh, team members who are the heads of the services, uh, team one and team two. Tom, uh, too, so they supervise uh, the day. Team. Altogether, it was possible to 
get 100 points for five experiences. The last uh, evaluation criterion was the concept of ecology in cleaning and we express interest in being provided improved procedures that go beyond our uh, obligatory requirements uh, according to the definition of ecological cleaning. The suppliers uh, um, could provide a description of improved cleaning services, including uh, you, how these improved or enhanced services would be provided. The maximum awarded is five points for one environmental friendly solution, and uh, we um, were willing to take into consideration two solutions, so altogether uh, they could get 10 points, and uh, through coefficients, 100 points, so all the suppliers were able to um, offer at least two environmental uh, friendly solutions. Of course, uh, this uh, uh, offer of enhanced services became uh, a binding part of the contract. What was the result of our tender? We received seven bids, and uh, the pr bid prices uh, ranged from four million to five million, and the winner offered 3.99 million crowns. It was the lowest bid. He was uh, he scored 100 points. He also offered 150 crowns per hour, um, so, uh, guaranteed minimum wages for the cleaning staff. Uh, the experience of the team members uh, evaluated uh, based on the satisfaction of the client offered uh, four experiences, he got 80 uh, points, and he offered two solutions in ecological approach to cleaning and was awarded 100 points. So for us, it was uh, quite a good learning that we found out that even the multi-criteria uh, evaluation, um, uh, the Price criterion has 30 uh, percent, but it doesn't have to mean that uh, the client would get uh, uh, the solution for higher price. The most successful or the winner uh, offered the uh, lowest uh, price, and they also uh, got a special award for environmental friendly approach to uh, cleaning service provision. Here's the link uh, for those interested to uh, comprehensive information uh, to the uh, contracting authority profile. And thank you very much for your attention. I would also like to thank you for this uh, good practice example. And we have the last example, which is the tender called uh, um, prom promotional textile to be presented by Veronika Pejáčková from Technical University. So I have only six minutes for 12 slides. I would like to ask whether you organized some or procured textile or are planning to procure promotional or advertising textile, not many. So, uh, Technical University in Brno procured uh, promotional items, merchandise, and also promotional textile, or always uh, uh, for the price. What we tried for 2022 and 2023 was to include the aspects of socially responsible procurement as the assessment criteria. When we researched uh, what aspects could be applied for 
for all advertising and promotional items, uh, we found out that the philosophy behind the textile is significantly different uh, from uh, pens or uh, recycled notebooks. So we wanted the textile, um, uh, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, um, polo shirt. Um, so um, uh, it, uh, half of it, it will be in red uh, color and the second half in a blue uh, color, so it is uh, quite an important item in uh, uh, public events, especially hockey and so on. Uh, so we actually uh, wanted to procure the textile in a separate uh, tender because we knew it would uh, uh, significantly differ from other uh, promotional items. So we soon found out that a port from many environmental textiles, what there is also social responsibility that makes this stand different from others. Um, we believe that uh, socially responsible approach is quite appropriate for university for the clothes in which actually represent the institutions. In the first stage, when I had the result of those researches, I was uh, flooded with uh, how many inputs and problems uh, are existent during the production of a T-shirt. So it was, for me, the priority was the social responsibility. Therefore, I set uh, fair wear as the priority, which uh, highlights the aspects of responsible production. Uh, the contract uh, uh, was in the law, uh, regime of the law. Uh, it is uh, uh, a one-year framework agreement uh, with an expected value of 2 million crowns without uh, VAT. T. This also the limit value. I skipped one slide. I don't know how to go back. I'd like to say uh, what were the failures and achievements. Uh, I think the result was quite successful. We were quite lucky, even though uh, the preparation was very detailed. The result is that we were able to procure uh, T-shirts and sweatshirts that are fair wear, which is uh, an analogy to fair trade. It is uh, made uh, from organic cotton and there is also some admixture material uh, and uh, it's polyester, 20% uh, and is fully recyclable. So in terms of material, uh, it complied with our requirements. On the other hand, I actually, uh, it is a product that uh, was not required by anyone and we just uh, provided an item to the marketing department uh, and uh, question is whether we are able to uh, appreciate it. Other universities uh, show that uh, the incoming generation of students place a great emphasis on social responsibility, and they are open to that. So the question is uh, how our technical university is able to promote it. Now, failures, um, you will manage to forget it until the end of the presentation. The preparation was very difficult. I didn't know anything about the textile. My boss uh, gave me a few weeks uh, to conduct the research. Uh, so from the phase of opening the bits until uh, the um, concluding the contract, uh, five months passed. So uh, I'm glad that the result uh, was quite successful even uh, 
uh, we had uh, good luck. So uh, evaluation criteria I wanted to show. Uh, uh, we had lengthy discussion about the evaluation criteria. Of course, we are interested in the price. We sell these uh, promo uh, items to our students. Priority for me was uh, uh, the stage of uh, manufacturing uh, of uh, the clothes. So, so therefore, uh, I um, allocated 30 percent. And another criterion was uh, the assessment of organic cotton, because uh, uh, there are a lot of characteristics of that, including the growing. Then uh, was 20%. Uh, then since uh, 2019, uh, viscose uh, fiber from um, uh, pulp is uh, produced, so is uh, very special. It's called Liosel. If you Google it, it is a natural fiber of new generation, which is true. It is processed in technological cycles that are of very low energy intensity. It is processed with minimal uh, water consumption and uh, environmental impact is very low. It is used especially uh, for uh, the production of towels or, or <coughs> work uh, textiles or sporting clothes. Uh, the price uh, is uh, quite high. We like the idea, so we uh, left it there, and uh, uh, we did not receive any bid uh, for this criteria. Uh, we at least uh, uh, send some signal that the material exists in the market and that we like it. We knew that we can require organic cotton. We knew that we wanted fair textile and how to include it into tender documentation. You know, we actually needed to define the evaluation criteria because if we say organic cotton, that's quite clear. Uh, uh, but uh, organic cotton uh, doesn't have any definition. The same applied to fair textiles. You want the fair uh, manufacturing conditions. And how, but how to define that? And I knew that I didn't want to get into the stage where I would have the bits on the table and I would assess whether the t-shirt or a sweatshirt that is produced in uh, Far East uh, complies with with our requirements for fair conditions. So therefore, we actually uh, did it as follow. I'm now going back to the evaluation criteria. Luckily enough, there is a certification firm foundation, which is a robust organization. It's a Netherlands-based organization, which is a umbrella organization for more than 50 suppliers with the certified the, the products. The firm foundation guarantees that uh, uh, it uh, complies with uh, the code of uh, uh, working conditions. We were very lucky. I will show you the the bits. Uh, this particular criteria did uh, did uh, understand the request. The Fairway Foundation has uh, its uh, own uh, possibility of search through which uh, you can verify whether the partic particular uh, organization is uh, is uh, Certified. At the same time, it guarantees the compliance with the standards of the ILO uh, to uh, the real details of uh, our perception. Of course, it's difficult to export our way of thinking to Far East. 
least uh, concerning uh, the working conditions. At, uh, I, on my behalf, I would be perfectly satisfied if there would be safe, uh, healthy working conditions and uh, uh, at least uh, no child work. It would be, it would be uh, stupid to omit uh, the child's uh, work, uh, the appropriate uh, work times or decent time, and the fact that the work has to be, of course, rewarded uh, by uh, wage. Uh, we have uh, decided to use the Section 74, which uh, actually enables uh, to use only particular particular uh, conditions and does not necessarily have to require the compliance with all the conditions of the label. So this uh, type of setup I would definitely recommend to use uh, for the future. This is just to show you the wording of uh, uh, the, our uh, tent documents. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, because we had to, of course, so we didn't carry out any preliminary market consultation, so we had to uh, clarify or actually word it, uh, the text quite clearly. So we have, uh, did, we have uh, said that uh, they may prove the, this uh, evaluation criteria by, for example, the Certificate of Fervor Foundation uh, then, uh, or the uh, GOTS. Uh, we, of course, had to uh, prove uh, any alternative, this sort of uh, wording we use for uh, any uh, public procurement, be it IT or cleaning agents, etc., where we have to work with some alternative labeling. The other, another evaluation criteria was uh, the content of uh, cotton in uh, organic, organic, organic cotton quality. Organic cotton is uh, water consumption in tents. It's uh, very demanding for the soil, Wherever the cotton is being uh, being grown, the soil is uh, exaggerated, and they are using the pesticides, uh, which do uh, increase value of the soil. So the requirement uh, for the organic cotton makes uh, sense uh, because the uh, majority of uh, the certificates certifying the organic cotton follows uh, the, the soil treatment, use of uh, pesticides, etc. There was also the requirement uh, for the ethic manufacturing, so it's not only growing the cotton, but also the processing of uh, the cotton and conditions in the manufacturing plant. So all these three aspects are being uh, certified by the organic textile standards the GOTS certification. Again, the same uh, philosophy as in case of uh, fervor. It doesn't, uh, of course, uh, cover all the aspects uh, required by the certificate. For example, G GMO free, I didn't consider that of the greatest importance. At least I have used three aspects which I consider as uh, absolutely necessary. This is the standard which I consider as organic cotton. These, uh, for, for example, the shared with short sleeves, we did not uh, consider that uh, as uh, of greatest importance to comply with this particular criteria. The third uh, evaluation criteria was the viscose uh, threat from uh, the pulp, the leocell. Again, we have uh, described what uh, should be the target or the purpose. So, and the, these uh, were the bits. Uh, I didn't know who is, uh, who is uh, the bidder. I assumed uh, that uh, the fur, fur textile is uh, usually not uh, the event agency or the, uh, those who are selling merch, uh, promotional uh, textile. They have uh, offered uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, different 
products, uh, the biggest issue was the organic cotton, the bed number five, which is the most, most uh, expensive, but recycled uh, PS is additional information, but uh, complies with all the with all the requirements for the organic cotton. When I was talking to the bidder, they are just quite a common uh, agency, but as they are also bidding for uh, for the public procurement in Germany, so really, they really knew what to uh, offer. So considering the alternatives, and we are uh, bidding for a criteria which is not exactly defined as, for example, the organic cutting. So you can see there were different range of certification as uh, Ecotex, which uh, actually has six subcategories. We had to get acquainted with it. Uh, they are ba based on uh, the REACH uh, framework, which is uh, another, uh, another robust, uh, robust system. Con content standards uh, OCS is uh, another one, and then OCS, and then we had the uh, so the evaluation or assessment uh, Thanks, thanks to the individual bids, we had to educate ourselves. It's uh, you know, great to know that there is uh, Ecotex, and you can see that there are six other subcategories. So next week, you have a lot to read and go through. Organic uh, cotton, probably it's uh, not an issue to, to any of you. If you need uh, more information on it, uh, I'm of course available. There is no need to read the next slide, but I have gone through and studied all the standards, certification. So the bidders have received reasoning for our decision. I was always uh, giving them the opinion about the individual standards, certificates, etc. So I would say they have received quite a nice response to their the bid. As in case of uh, other procurements, uh, it proved great to request uh, the samples. We had uh, one uh, set of uh, samples which uh, went through the washing cycle, uh, but also should be taken into consideration our uh, colors and technologies used for the printing on uh, the textile. I'm sorry, I couldn't speed it up anymore. I would like to extend my thanks to Ms. Piačkova and all uh, the other panelists for sharing with us uh, their best uh, practice, which may help uh, other procurers.